This video is going to be my final wrap up of the Ibis Mojo. Ibis sent me this bike a month and a half ago. I've had a blast riding it. Before that, they sent me the Ripley. So during this video, I'll probably do just a little bit of comparison of 27.5 versus 29 because if you're thinking about the Mojo, you may be also looking at the Ripley or another 29er and trying to decide which one is best for your riding style. So again, I'll probably mention a little bit about that. I've ridden this bike locally, which are more cross country trails, and I've taken it to the mountains of North Georgia where I had an absolute blast riding this bike. Before I continue with the video, I do wanna thank the sponsor of the video, which is the Pros Closet. If you're not familiar with the Pros Closet, they sell certified pre-owned bikes. What that means is when they take in bikes, they have mechanics on staff that go over them from top to bottom. They clean them, they replace worn or damaged parts. They'll thoroughly tune them up and get the bikes running as good as new. What I really like about the Pros Closet is they also support local bike shops. So if you sell your bike to the Pros Closet, they'll give you credit that you can use at your local bike shop. And when you sell your bike to the Pros Closet, they'll cover the shipping. And if you buy a bike from them, they'll ship it directly to your door for free if you use the code that I link in the description below. So check out the Pros Closet. The advantage for me of 27.5 that I noticed after being on 29 for over a year now solid is that you can add more travel to the bike without making the bike feel too big. So if you've ridden a longer travel 29er and on the type of trails that you ride, if the bike just felt a little too clumsy, a little too big, hard to get around corners, that's where the 27.5 comes in. So you can have a bike that feels really agile, really playful, but still has a really good amount of travel. So this bike has 140 in the front, 130 in the back, which is, I think, a great amount of travel for a bike that just covers a wide variety of terrain. In my first look at this bike when I got it in, I covered the components. So I'm not gonna rehash that, but I am gonna talk about a few of the components that I liked and a couple that I did not like. During my demo of this bike, the SLX drivetrain was absolutely flawless. It is Shimano 12 speed, and I did not get that SRAM kind of trying to find one gear right in the middle that I get on some of my bikes that have SRAM. I like SRAM, but uh, you do have that one gear where it feels like it's trying to jump into another gear. On this bike, the, again, the drivetrain was flawless. I really like these wide carbon Ibis rims. Now, these don't necessarily come on all of the bikes. Uh, this is kind of a unique build for the demo, but again, it came with their wide, I think they're 35 mil wide carbon rims, and they were just rock solid. I mean, it kind of helps the playfulness of the bike. So if you have rims that don't have a lot of flex it just helps the ride quality and i'll talk more about the ride quality coming up i'm a huge fan of fox suspension like i said 140 fork in the front and 130 travel in the back again with a fox shock uh, super smooth I, i'm not going to talk too much about that i really want to focus on the ride quality of the bike so let's go ahead and start with the dw link dw link is about the best in the business for a solid pedaling platform i put it right up there like with Niner CVA suspension. And I've had other DW Link bikes in the past, and this DW Link felt a little more plush. When you're in the saddle pedaling, there is just no pedal bob. And the DW Link, like I said, is, is really good for that. And going downhill out of the saddle, the suspension was very plush. So I mentioned the advantage of 27.5. Another great thing about 27.5 is you just feel like your center of gravity is lower to the trail. And so when you drop the seat post and get down low on corners, you feel like you could just rail corners. And riding flow trails on this bike is an absolute blast. The frame is stiff laterally and with a smaller 27.5 wheels, you can just pop from corner to corner. And again, that's to me where the 27.5 really shines. Where I prefer 29 is on those just really chunky trails where you wanna feel like you stay on top of the chatter. Going uphill is where I actually miss 29 when I'm on 27.5. If there are like rock ledges, roots and things like that where you need to keep your momentum to get over. However, I will say there was a section riding North Georgia where I have rarely cleared. I think I've only cleared it like one or two other times. It's up a steep hill with a root garden and I actually got up it really easily on this bike. I think it was because it was one of those trails where 
you had to you know build back up your momentum you'll lose it real quick and have to build it right back up and that's where 27.5 wheels really help is getting that momentum back quickly it was going downhill that i had the most fun on this bike and you know going downhill you've already got momentum you know with the 29 inch wheels they do stay above the chatter above the chunk better but with the 27.5 wheels, they're really playful. Like I said, they're, they're, they're agile, but you've already got momentum. So you're able to really just focus on, you know, the downhills and picking the lines. I was able to just move this bike to another line really quickly going downhill. And, and I, again, I think that speaks to the 27.5 inch wheels. So now I'll mention something that I did not like about this bike, and that is the i think it was the steeper seat tube angle so on my local cross country trails i felt like i was just pitched forward too much on this bike i felt like the saddle was too high but i checked my knee bend did the heel method test on the pedals and the saddle was fine but it just felt like the seat tube angle was a just a tad bit too steep now it could also have been this saddle so this is a shorter saddle so it's almost two and a half maybe even three centimeters shorter than my other saddles and i just felt like i couldn't get my weight back like i felt like i wanted to shift my weight back like an inch and again it just pitched me forward too much so it may be the seat tube angle now i did not notice that on the ripley i don't notice it on any of my 29er trail bikes but this bike uh, again on just on cross country trails when i was riding up in the mountains i did not have that problem at all in fact i didn't even notice it now where i appreciate the steeper seat tube angle is like i said earlier on those chunky sections where when i'm more forward i just have more confidence so there there definitely is a balance so if this were my bike i would get a longer saddle like the wtb silverado this particular wtb saddle is the coda not one that i like uh, but I, I like the Silverado. So I would try that first, and then I might even try a seat post with a little bit of a setback. Well, the Ibis Mojo is a blast to ride. The type of person that I think would like this bike over something like the Ripley is you are the type of rider, you like moving around a lot on the trail. Maybe you feel like 29ers are too big, they're too clunky feeling for you or you like to jump. If you like riding flow trails, so in other words, trails that just have a lot of turns, but not a lot of chunk, they're just fast and flowy. I mean, th that's what this bike is made for. This is also a great just all around bike. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this bike with 140 in the front, 130 in the back, you're, you're really just ready for anything. You can ride it on cross country trails. You can take it on more chunky, gnarly downhills just not like super fast enduro stuff and i think i mentioned this in another video this kind of compares and travel to a 29er that has about 10 mil less travel so 130 120 in the back again those are the types of bikes that can really be just your one mountain bike if of course you're not racing cross country or racing enduro so as always questions or comments that you have about this video go ahead and drop those below thanks for watching